Jean Piaget. Piaget is the most famous developmental psychologist. He worked in Switzerland and he studied the development of thinking. Piaget argued that children and babies actively explore the world and actively try to make sense of it. And he thought that they took the information um, in about the world and found structures that he called schemas to help them understand the world, sort of a scaffolding of understanding. For Piaget, there were two key processes in our development of thought, assimilation and accommodation. Assimilation occurs when we take information that we're experiencing it and we make sense of it in terms of the way we have understood the world for a while. Accommodation is when we change the way we see the world. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, imagine that you grew up in a household that had um, a dog. Imagine you grew up with a pet dog and you knew that this creature living in your house was a dog. Okay. Imagine what happened to you the first time you saw a cat. Hmm. Now, you know a dog is furry, maybe it has a tail, four legs, it's down low, and then you see a cat. Assimilation is, you look at that cat and go, obviously that's a dog, right? You're not changing the way you think, you're taking this world, oh, furry thing, four feet, and you're understanding it in terms of what you already know. Furry four feet means it's a dog. Accommodation would happen when you realize, no, nope, dogs and cats are two different animals. So you have to change the way that you understand the world, your schemas, your framework, whatever language you want, you want to use. So the kid who figures out, yeah, I know what a dog is, but a cat is something different. And at home I've got a dog, but this thing's a cat. That's accommodation. So Piaget said we're constantly um, uh, using those two processes, assimilation and accommodation, as we learn to think. Piaget is probably most famous, however, for his stages of cognitive development. The first is sensory motor, and that takes place from birth until about the age of two. The second stage is pre-operational, from two to six, concrete operational, from six to 12, and formal operational is from puberty onward. Basically, formal operational is when you think like an adult. Um, okay, what does sensory motor mean? Sensory motor as a stage in Piaget's understanding of the world is when you understand the world through your senses and through your motor system. What do I mean by that? Have you ever played peekaboo with a young kid? Peekaboo! Peekaboo! What a dumb game. Why? Why do we do that? We do that because very young infants love it. Because here's the thing with young infants. If you can't see something, then for a young infant, it doesn't exist. You can't see my face, it must be gone. <gasps> it's back, oh, now it's gone, <gasps> it's back. Peekaboo. Okay. So young children think that if they don't see something, it literally just disappears. They don't have a concept yet called object permanence. The idea that when an object disappears, it can still exist. Yeah, object permanence is something that uh, children need to develop during the sensory motor stage. So how do we know this, is, this exists? Well, in the top set of pictures right there, you see a woman with a toy and she hides the toy under the baby's blanket and what's the baby's reaction? Nothing. Because why would you look for a toy if it's disappeared, right? I don't see it, so therefore it doesn't exist. Now, that's a baby who does not have object permanence yet. Object permanence is indicated by the lower set of drawings. There's a woman again, she shows the toy, she hides the toy under the blanket again, and what happens? Now the baby looks for the toy under the blanket because the baby knows just because I can't see the toy doesn't mean the toy's gone, it's still there. 
so you could imagine a baby sometimes babies get extremely upset when a caregiver is not in eyesight imagine imagine if you imagine the world if you thought that when somebody left the room or walked behind you they disappeared terrifying right okay so the development of object permanence occurs during the sensory motor stage you don't have it at the beginning but you develop it pre-operational kids understand object permanence um, but for me the funniest thing about the pre-operational stage is that kids at this age are incredibly egocentric crazy egocentric um, egocentrism at its best so what do I mean by this if you take a four-year-old or a five-year-old child let's say we take a boy and you ask the boy do you have a sister and let's say he does and the boy says yeah I have a sister okay then you ask does your sister have a brother no he doesn't have a brother so therefore his sister doesn't have a brother you get it that level of egocentrism um, there's a cartoon here where a little boy is on the telephone and he says look what I can do grandma because he can see the yo-yo so obviously grandma must be able to see the yoga yoko yo-yo um, Piaget studied this ex uh, egocentrism with something called the three mountain uh, test and in this three mountain test what he would do is what you see in the cartoon at the bottom here he created a sort of landscape um, where you could see some houses from some points of view but not others and he'd let the child walk around the table so the child could see that as you walked around the table what you saw varied you sit the kid down and you say okay can you see the barn and the kid says yeah absolutely I can see the barn then you say the doll on the other side I guess Raggedy Andy can Raggedy Andy see the house the kid's always going to say yes if he can see the house even though there's no way that Raggedy Andy could see the house because there's a giant mountain in the way that's egocentrism so um, this is at an age you've heard of the terrible twos the pre-operational stage includes the terrible twos and if you've ever seen a child just have a complete meltdown I want dinner now it's hard for them to come to understand that the world doesn't revolve around them because for the first few years of their life they think the world did revolve around them that if they're hungry everybody must be hungry right if they want candy everybody must want candy so for them to understand right for this accommodation to occur for them to change the way they see the world that's it's hard that's a struggle as any parents would know now there's another really fun thing about the pre-operational stage and that is the kids show magical thinking that's just cray cray yeah crazy magical thinking one example is something called conservation now you know if you take uh, a glass of water and pour it into a different glass that has the same shape there's the same amount of water in both glasses and pouring water from one glass into another doesn't make more water except if you're in the pre-operational stage then it does if you ask kids you know this is this is actually a great thing to know for parents you want your kids to think they got a lot of gifts you'll see spread them out they'll think they're more gifts they don't want to eat their peas fine mush the peas together so it makes a smaller area they'll think they're fewer peas it's crazy so um, this drawing shows you uh, some pictures of a that's going to demonstrate the same idea as a video I want to show you because it's so amazing so this little girl sees two glasses of water in front of her one glass of water is poured into a, a tall narrow um, glass kind of beaker and uh, then the question is which glass has more water at the beginning the child will say the two glasses have more water but if you pour the glass of water into a tall skinny glass then they'll say there's more water watch see it's amazing
two rows of quarters. Okay, does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more quarters or are they the same? The same. The same? Okay, now watch. Now, does this row have more quarters? Does this row have more quarters or are they the same? That one has more quarters. That one has more quarters? Yeah. Why does that one have more quarters? Because it's stretched out. Because it's stretched out? Yes. Okay, so how many are in this row? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, how many are in this row? One, two, three, four, five. So, are there more in this row? This row, or are they the same? The same. The same? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have two sticks. Is this stick longer? Is this stick longer, or are they the same? The same. The same? What about now? Is this stick longer? Is this stick longer, or are they the same? That stick is longer. The stick is longer? Yeah. Can you tell me why? Because you moved it over. So now it's longer? Yeah. Okay, tell me. I'm going to pour blue water into each of these cups, and you're going to have to tell me when, they're the, when they have the same amount, okay? Okay, tell me when this one is the same. The same. The same? Those two are the same now? Yeah. Okay. this. We're going to take the blue water from this glass and we're going to pour it into this glass. Now, does this glass have more water? Does this glass have more water or are they the same? It has more water. This one has more water? Can you tell me why? Because that one's higher than that one. That one's higher than that one, right. Can you tell me? Does this ball have more Play-Doh? Does this ball have more Play-Doh or are they the same? That one has more Play-Doh. That, that one has more? Yeah. Let's make them, let's try and make them the same. Make them into two of the same size. What about, what about now? They're the same. They're the same now? Yeah. Okay, now watch. Now, does this one have more Play-Doh? Does this one have more Play-Doh, or are they the same? That one has more Play-Doh. That one has more Play-Doh? Can you tell me why? You smushed that one. Because that one's smushed. How about... How about now? Does this one have more Play-Doh? Does this one have more Play-Doh, or are they the same? The same. Now they're the same? Why are they the same? You roll that one back up. Okay. Great. Mm. Okay. Did we share the graham crackers fair? Is this fair? Yes. Yes? Can you tell me why it's fair? You have one and I do. I have one? I have two and I have one. Is that fair? No. No? How about now? Now that's fair. Now that's fair? Why is that fair? You have two and I have two. Okay. The next stage is the concrete operational stage. That's six to 12 years. In the concrete operational stage, kids are really good with reality. They like to categorize and sort things. So in the old days, before there were fun video games, we thought it was great to collect pennies and sort them by year or maybe baseball cards. Uh, young kids now uh, probably collect Pokemon things. So kids in the concrete operational stage can think clearly and logically about the world, but only the concrete world. Anything hypothetical, they're a train wreck. So they really struggle with abstract reasoning. Finally, the formal operational stage. Honestly, Piaget didn't do much work in this stage. He basically said, that's when you think like an adult. So for him, from, for puberty on, you have adult-like thinking. So you can talk about hypotheses and deductive and inductive reasoning, all the sort of types of reasoning that adults do. That's the end of our first lecture on development. 
our next lecture will be on other aspects of development, basically social development.